discussion. So we have the amazing Senator Masi Chebeni with us. She's one of the youngest lawmakers in our parliament and in Senate. I'll have her introduce herself. Thank Senator you. Senator Chebeni, yes. tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, thank you, Vanya. Thank you for inviting me for this session. Um, my name is Masi Chebeni, a nominated senator, and I serve uh, in the Kenyan Senate. And um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Senator Chebeni, mm -hmm. as a young lawmaker, I'm sure you've been in conversations about the number, the population of young people we have in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder what, to you, meaningful youth engagement means. What does meaningful youth engagement represent for you? Uh, thank you for that question. In my opinion, I think uh, meaningful uh, youth engagement means that uh, young people are actively involved in uh, you know processes in terms of policy making mm -hmm. and uh, other matters relating to young people in this country uh, but uh, what happens uh, normally is uh, we have young people yes participating but most of the time is pa passive participation you know they're just what there does that mean? they're just there uh, they're seeing everything going, but they do not take an active role, you know. Yeah. Like, uh, say, for instance, if there's a bill um, in Parliament mm -hmm. and they've called out for public participation, right. that's a way that young people can meaningfully participate in the policy-making process. But mm -hmm. young people, like, we don't show up for this, um, you know, public uh, participation process. Right. I've been instances where you, as a, in, a, in committees that I serve, uh, we call for public participation on certain bills, mm -hmm. but yeah, the... the the statistics on young people participating is very wanting. Yes. So for me, I would uh, you know, urge young people to look out for uh, opportunities to participate actively. Yeah. You know, like for instance, during public participation on bills. On bills. Yeah. So young people are active, especially on online mm -hmm. platforms, right? Mm -hmm. And we are trendsetters mm -hmm. on very many things, mm -hmm. social culturally, right? Mm -hmm. And so, as you're saying, this is a call for young people to engage in the political sphere. Mm -hmm. So, in your opinion, how do you think young people can influence policy making, especially at the national level? How can they take advantage of the petitions to influence policy making? Uh, thank you for mentioning um, the use of petition to influence, uh, you know, policy making uh, in this country by young people, especially. Um, petitions are uh, are uh, uh, you know, matters that uh, deal with, you know, the issue, you can raise petitions to public organizations. Yes. And um, raising a petition is a right, as far as I'm concerned, it's a right. Um, it's in the, you know, constitution that it's a right for every person to petition um, any organization or public authority. And Article 37, you know, is very uh, precise on that, that you have a right to petition, you have a right to, uh, most of the time we only read it up to, you know, uh, uh, doing rallies or, mm -hmm. or what are they called, going to the streets, yeah. and, you know. Yeah. Um, but we forget that there's uh, also another bit of it, that uh, you have to petition public authorities. Yes. Yes. So petitioning uh, is a very, it's a very direct um, uh, uh, opportunity for young people to engage especially with parliamentarians because uh, the petitioning process is very precise it is very timely there is a framework to it it is governed by law it's in law actually so and parliament you know it's mandated to actually look at matters that have arisen uh, through petitions within a specific timeline so and at the end of the day the petitioner really gets to get a report and uh, uh, most of the time they engage with the parliamentarians in a certain committee directly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so basically you're saying what we put in writing as young people, mm -hmm. um, addressing a specific mm -hmm. bill yeah. um, um, or l legislative process mm -hmm. would provide us that opportunity. Yes. So the thing is, young, as young people, as you said, we are on social platforms, mm -hmm. like social media pl platforms, mm -hmm. and one of the... Petition sites, um, I would say that's more common, most common is change.org. Yeah. And what we, are, what we know is that those online driven petition platforms don't necessarily mm. translate yeah. into changes in policy making. Mm -hmm. What would your recommendation be for young people to switch from that online kind of a remote mm -hmm. engagement to a more intentional one yeah. looking at bills? Yeah, but I think what I've said is, uh, you know, 
a petition is a right to every citizen yeah. to petition a specific uh, public authority. Yes. And as I said earlier, it's governed by law and uh, there's a, there are procedures to it. So Article 37, of course, it um, highlights uh, uh, the right to petition. And then Article 119 uh, gives uh, Parliament, uh, you know, a mandate to have structures in place on how they're going to um, process these petitions. So it's not just um, a matter that is in, in, you know, in the air or uh, there's a definite uh, procedure to it. Yeah. So for me, I would, I would um, suggest to young people really to look at petitions through the Parliament. That's a better way because one, it's timely. Yeah. Uh, there's a, you know, once <laughs> you, if for instance you are the petitioner, so you write a petition, yes. then you send it to the clerk yeah. uh, of the Senate or of the National Assembly. Yeah. And then from there, the clerk has seven days to consider your petition to see whether it you know, fits in the structures of parliament and, and things like that. And then from there now, he reports to the speaker uh, of the Senate. Mm. And when, once the speaker has the report, he is mandated to basically um, report it to the floor of the house, you know. And uh, once he reads it at the floor of the house, then uh, uh, it becomes a matter of the house. And then it is committed uh, to a specific standing committee. Yeah. And you know, as you know, um, committees in parliaments is where really the work is. You know, most of the time people think um, it's during sessions, but really it's during the committee level that work by parliamentarians is done. Mm -hmm. So once it's committed to the committees, it takes around 60 days for, for the matter to be considered. Right. That is by law. You know, yeah. we are governed by our standing orders and, uh, you know, the, the uh, Procedures Act. Yeah. So within 60 days, um, that is a very good time to for the matter to be considered conclusively. Yeah. Because in that moment, first yeah. of all, you as the petitioner will be called to you know address your your issue. Mm -hmm. Secondly, all the relevant stakeholders yeah. concerning that specific petition will be called. Mm -hmm. So you'll have a moment as a young person to actually directly engage address. with yes and address parliamentarians. So you see, and sometimes we are nine. A committee like in the Senate has nine members. Yeah. So you see, it's a, it's a way that you can directly engage with parliamentarians mm -hmm. and, and and get your matters um, out as a young person. Thank you so much. So basically, you're telling us as young people, there's an mm -hmm. opportunity. Yes. There's a structure. Mm -hmm. There's an accountability mechanism already set yes. up in the way parliament is, mm -hmm. is, as a whole is expected to work. Mm -hmm. And a petition will give you as a young person that opportunity to come and address that issue. Yes. So are you saying that young people can, as a young person or as a group, we can put a petition on a matter that, that, that doesn't even align necessarily with a bill? A matter of concern? Mm -hmm. So let's say there's a matter of national concern. Mm -hmm. Can they do a petition on that, or do they have to wait for a legislative? Uh, no, no, no. To come Actually, up? you petition um, to any public authority, and it's with regards to any matter concerning yeah. or um, uh, any matter within which that organization um, uh, handles. Yes. Like for instance, if it's the Senate, we yeah. deal with county governments. We deal with any matter national government. Maybe. Yes. So with regards to that. Um, a young person can come up and say, you know, we have employment issues at a specific county yes. and say this matter was not addressed in a right way. Mm -hmm. So with that and having done their own research, they then present their petition to, to, to the Senate. Yeah. And uh, from there then, so it's, it's on any matter really, on any matter, but within uh, the mandate of that specific organization. Got it. Yeah. So in, in your opinion, what then is the role of specifically mm -hmm. Le the, the legislative arm of government, mm -hmm. so that's all of parliament. What's their role in promoting meaningful youth engagement? The reason I ask this is because a lot of the sis we and um, the chair of the KYP likes referring to this a lot, um, Senator Sakaja, in terms of young people are dealing with a 19th century institution mm -hmm. and we're leaving past mm -hmm. the 21st. So, what do you think then is the responsibility? of le le legislative institutions mm -hmm. such as the Senate mm -hmm. to now meet people where young people where they are? I think um, to just say it's a responsibility of the legislative arm is wrong mm -hmm. uh, because we both, uh, you know, as young people we have a role to play and the, yes. the, the, the legislative arm of government has its own role to play. Mm -hmm. So not unless we decide to, you know, do our part and meet at the, at the, you know, at the center then 
we fail because young people really we know how to push as you said on social media we're very good at it yeah we push we push we push yeah so imagine if young people decided to actively now call out and i've had engagements with you mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, you your engagement with kypa that's yes. one way that uh, legislators get to interact with uh, young, people young people through too. kypa yeah so you see um it's a it's both of our responsibilities, both the young people to do their part and the legislative arm to do their part through the specific or various structures like yeah. KYP as an organization that, you know, handles matters young legislators. Right. Yes. So, so do you think there is room then that as a young person will be able to submit petitions online, mm -hmm. have, have hearings, mm -hmm. um, you know, online as well? Mm -hmm. That that's what we mean in terms of because the conversations we've had with um both senators uh, mm -hmm. both lawmakers uh, let me say both the national assembly and senate and young people is that yes we young people are saying we want to be meaningfully engaged mm -hmm. and lawmakers have also admitted that there's a lot of bureaucracy papers there's yeah. so much to mm -hmm. you know so maybe my question then is is there room for the lawmaking institutions to also adjust to the times of today? That's basically the question. Okay, I, I, I get your question. Um, I think there's room, if you ask me, I think there's room. Yeah. And one way that uh, sometimes I think should be um, uh, put into law is the threshold for maybe public participation. Let, right. let me just put public participation right. on the spot for, for yeah. a second. Yeah. So that the threshold is that um, it cannot be said that it's a public participation, not unless you've seen young people in that mm. meeting. Because most of the time they call for public participation. And then later on you hear, oh, but was there really public participation? Young people are saying, we were not involved. Yeah, yeah. We so maybe we need happening. to put a threshold and say that for it to be called a public participation, then there should be um, a way that young people have been engaged in that public participation yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, considering matters petition i think it's very clear um you know a petition as i said is handled uh, through committees yeah. and the committees have a way of running and um, now we have online um because of covid of course mm. we have online um engagements uh, because people cannot meet and whatnot, so mm. because of COVID, we have online engagements. But initially, we used to, of course, as, as a committee, meet physically. Yeah. Uh, so, with matters online engagement, uh, I think once you have tabled your petition to the clerk or sent your petition to the clerk, then mm. you wait. So you will be communicated to, of course, mm. um, and then you will appear. Yeah. In whatever form, maybe physically, you mm. never know. Maybe your matter will be considered uh, physically yeah. or through online, or virtually. or virtually through online platforms. And so you may choose to either, you know, and then ask for a recording and you can put your petition out there. But yeah. uh, matters concerning um, how the committees work, I think it's either virtual or, for now, it's either virtual or um, physical yeah it depends with the, with the matter at hand yeah but uh, how to deal with uh, petitions is very it's very structural so there's no there's no room for as i said the the, the law is very clear yeah. on how um, the parliament handles petitions yeah yeah so um you're a young person in parliament mm -hmm. what was your experience with lawmaking when you first joined parliament I ask this because um, when we did the report mm -hmm. for meaningful youth engagement, mm -hmm. what we saw is that young people do want to engage in governance. They may even want to run for office. They may have the fire in their belly, but there isn't enough information out there about governance, about how the systems work. Mm. So you may have the desire. And so when they, when you actually voted into parliament or nominated, you are learning on the job. Yeah. What was your experience? Uh, well, I'm still experiencing it, so <laughs> it's a learning experience, yes. of course, um, yeah. coming from a different working environment to this, it's yeah. completely different. You have to manage your time, you have to do all those things by yourself. The, right. the, the, it's like there's no specific JD other than oversight, representation, right. and legislative right. work, and yeah. um, you know, if you're not well um, versed with how to process bills and whatnot, it becomes mm -hmm. a challenge. But I thank God because uh, once you join in parliament, you're taken through a session 
where you're informed on, on the processes. If you really want it, then yeah. you will have to find the right information. And information is everywhere, Yes. you know. Yeah. So you will just know how to handle certain things. And yeah, but most important is when you join, there's always um, a session where you're taken through, you know, uh, what happens in parliament. Yeah. And from there, you just get to learn. Even myself, I, I, I didn't know how to process a bill, but now I have a now bill you do. in place. You have a bill you know? in parliament. I have a bill in parliament. It's up, actually up for, up for public participation right now. Okay. So maybe young people can uh, participate, you know. Just yeah. as, I've, as we've said, mm -hmm. they can put together a petition yeah. and submit it to the Senate. Yes. And they can get the opportunity to be heard. Yes. Actually, if, if they, uh, you know, it's very sad because I was trying to get the statistics on the number of petitions uh, Put to uh, given to parliament by young people, but it's it's, it's very slim. Yeah, yeah, what we have is less two percent. Yes, yes. Le two percent or yeah. about, or maybe even nine. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, so for me, really, um, I would urge young people to to get to petition parliament. It's a very straightforward um, process. process. Yeah. There are no shortcuts to it. Yeah. You get to engage parliamentarians directly. Yeah. You get to ask your questions directly because sometimes you know, you, as an as a, as the owner of the petition, you know what what is burning. Yes. So maybe the petition or maybe the people handling the petition may know may not understand. But, but once you're given the platform to you know, you know address the issue, then you can address the matter the matter with finality and make them understand. Yeah. You know your point of view. So I think young people should really consider uh, petitioning the parliament more. Are there forms that, or a guide that's available maybe on the Senate's website mm -hmm. to guide on petitions that young people can look at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you can find this information uh, on parliament uh, website. Yeah. Um, but basically you address your petition to the clerk. To the clerk of that specific Of that committee. specific, no, not of that specific committee clerk of the uh, Senate or clerk of the National Assembly, depending on where your matter is, because yes. if it's a matter concerning um, areas that touch on mandate of the Senate, then yeah. it's the clerk of the Senate. Yes. But if it's an area on uh, national uh, matters, then yeah. clerk of the National Assembly. So you write your, you know, your, your petition to the clerk, mm -hmm. you, di you direct it to the clerk, and then from there the clerk will handle it. Yeah. And I, I forgot to say, um, after 60 days, once um, you know, the, the report has been finalized. Mm -hmm. You will be given, within 15 days, mm -hmm. you'll be given your report. The clerk will actually probably call you in person and mm -hmm. say, hey, your report is ready, so yeah. you can come and have a look at it. Yeah. But you see, you've also engaged with the parliamentarian, so yes. you'll just know when it's done. And yes. So it's a, it's, a very, it's a very definite process, and it's a very sure way yeah. that you can get your to answers. Yes, yes. And to engage yeah. uh, with parliament. Did, so before you got, you became a lawmaker, did mm -hmm. you engage in any petition making process? No. Before bef that? Before that, no. I didn't engage in any petition making process. What was your engagement when it came to, as a young person, to um, maybe change making mm -hmm. that involved policies? For me, really, I think I did that at a very local level yes. at that time because yeah. I had my work and, uh, you know, hustling here and there. But yeah. Uh, engagement would be very at a very local level, um, but not necessarily uh, in terms of policy making, yeah. but maybe championing for youth issues and advocating for youth issues at my local village, yeah. and you know addressing issues to to do with girl child and issues like that. But uh, I did not uh, put forward any petition. Yeah. Yes, at that I, time. Yeah. Right now, I'm not allowed to do of any. Of course, you can't do a petition because yes. you're a lawmaker. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I'm not. I'm. I'm not mandated you, yeah. to do that uh, by law, actually. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's awesome because I think young people now are getting to see that the platforms for engagement are different. Mm -hmm. You can engage through advocacy at your very local level with communities. You can engage your county governments, as mm -hmm. we had from Nerima of South. See, as a place, there's different levels of engagement. Petitions can be to any institution they can of concern. They can address any matter of concern. There's opportunity to work with other young mm -hmm. people. There's opportunity to work directly with the National um, Assembly and the Senate. I think my final words would words would be um, that young people can get this information first of all at the Senate uh, uh, platforms. That is the website, Parliament website. You get to get the address of the Senate clerk. 
and then you can petition him directly. You can write to him and then he will respond to your issues and then direct the matter to the floor of the house. But uh, my parting shot is young people, let's not just um, uh, engage on social media, let's not just engage in the streets or, you know, as I said, Article 37, it's very clear that you have a right to picket and, you know, do all your things in the streets. But the right way to do it for me and, uh, you know, to meaningfully engage parliamentarians or uh, to be engaged fully in policy making processes through petitioning parliament. So that's a very sure way that young people can make their matters known and their issues addressed. So yeah, I'm hoping to get many petitions from now. I can um, follow it up. As I said, as a lawmaker or ra rather as a, as a senator, I cannot do my own petition. But if I get one or two from young people, I can then follow it up. Yeah. And actually I can, you know, mention it on the floor of the house mm. on their part. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for creating time for us and thank you for creating time for young people to hear from a lawmaker, um, a lawmaker that is within their age group, a lawmaker who mm -hmm. understands the environment that young people are living in and the desire for young people to change policies and laws mm -hmm. for improved lives. Thank you so much.